What's up everyone? We're here outside final table. We're gonna play another 20K guaranteed tournament. Let's get it, let's go. I'll see you guys inside. I've been sitting at this table and folding for an hour straight before I look down at ace queen offsuit and the cutoff. Action folds to me, I open up the action to 1200 and only the small blind comes along. Heads up to a flop of jack, seven, four with two spades. The small blind checks to me and this evening I decided to go with the small hand, small pot, big hand, big pot approach, at least in the early levels of this tournament. With that in mind, I check back. The turn is the king of diamonds, which opens up a straight draw to a 10 on top of being a great card for my range. The small blind checks. My hand wants to reach for chips, but I stick to my plan and check back. The river comes the nine of diamonds, and on this card, the small blind decides to lead for 2000, and I'm immediately getting some bluffy vibes from that bet. An eternal struggle takes place in my mind as I'm debating between hero calling or preserving my chips for a better spot. I've been brushing up on some strategy, and a common topic that came up was the importance of not losing chips in a tournament, that the comparative value of the chips you lose is greater than that of the chips you win. But even with that in mind, I still cannot find the fold button. I apologize to the table for my tanking. Sorry, just because I think it's a bluff, and I'm thinking of hero calling. You should definitely call a bluff. What? You should definitely call a bluff. Right? This is very interesting because I think in general, people who want you to pay them off tend to stay quiet. The fact that my opponent spoke up when I wasn't even addressing them directly is making me lean towards a call. A bit of a unreliable life tell, but I decide to go with it. Let's hope I'm right. That's all I got. Ace 10? Yep. It's always nice to make a correct hero call. It's a nice little confidence boost and we increase our stack by about 50%. A few hands later, I pick up my first premium of the night. I look down at pocket queens in the under the gun one position and I love to see it. There's a limp to my right and I open up the action to 1800. The low jack, who's been a very active and splashy player at this table, straight up jams their entire stack and they have me covered. When action folds back to me, I make the call. I'm up against jacks and in a great spot to get a full double up. Unfortunately, the flop brings a jack and I don't catch up on the turn or river and it's time for me to rebuy. Another hour goes by before I get involved in another hand. This time I pick up pocket eights in the low jack. There's a min raise to 1200 from the under the gun player. The middle position player calls. I go ahead and call to try and set mine. The button and both blinds come along. We go six ways to a flop of three aces. A very interesting board in a six-way pot that was raised pre-flop. I expect this flop to check around whether one of my opponents is holding an ace or not, and this is exactly what happens, action checks around. The turn is a deuce, and action checks all the way around to me. With only the button to act behind me, I get the feeling that no one has an ace, and sitting here with pocket eights, I think I can safely try to extract some value from smaller pairs and hands like king-queen, king-jack that my opponents are more likely to be holding. I throw out a small bet of 1500, actually the same amount I would be betting if I was holding an ace. The button folds, the small blind calls, and everybody else folds. Heads up to the river, which is the 10 of clubs, and the small blind checks to me. Now that there's an overcard to my eights, I feel like going for more value would be too thin. I don't really see what worse hand would call me at this point, so I check back, and my pocket eights are good. Our opponent said they had a pair as well, so I'm glad I read the situation right and was able to get a little bit of value from my hand here. Next hand, I'm in the big blind and I look down at ace-queen offsuit. The under the gun player opens to 1600 and is called by low jack and the small blind. I've been observing this table for a while now and I notice that players are calling raises with marginal hands just to see flops, so I have a good spot to squeeze here and I have the perfect hand to do it. I 3 bet to 6500 and one by one, all my opponents fold and I pick up a pot of almost 10 big blinds uncontested. Unfortunately, I go completely card dead for another hour and a half. I played a couple of pots here and there that did not go my way and here I am at the 1000-2000 blind level sitting on 12,000 or 6 big blinds. I'm on the low jack, I pick up ace 10 off and when action folds to me, I happily put my stack in. I wouldn't mind a call to potentially double up, but everybody folds. Still nice to increase my stack by almost 50%, but I'm going to need to double up soon. A few minutes later, I pick up pocket tens in the hijack. Everyone folds to me, and with 9 big blinds in my stack, this is an easy all-in. Action folds around to the small blind who tanks for about 30 seconds before finally making the call. 
The big blind gets out of the way, and we go heads up to a showdown against King Jack. The flop gives my opponent a jack. The turn gives me a flush draw, let's go. We need a 10 or club on the river. It's a queen of hearts and we are busto. I'm out of the tournament, but the knight is still young, so I sit down at a 1-2 table with a stack of 400. Let's run it up. Sadly, I am still running completely card dead at an extremely active table. There is a $5 straddle almost every hand. There's even been a couple of $10 straddles, and we're also doing a $5 or $10 bomb pot every orbit. So just by opening a couple of hands and doing a lot of folding, my stack is already down to $300. After about an hour and a half of folding, I finally pick up pocket queens in the under the gun position. I open up the action to 15, the player to my left calls, the low jack calls, and then the action player in the hijack makes it 50 to go, and I am licking my chops. I just saw this player 3 barrel bluff with ace high and reload, he seems to be tilting a little bit. The problem I have is my stack size here, because with two players left to act behind me, I'm 100% going to 3 bet, but to what amount? Any substantial raise I make is going to basically commit me to this hand, so even though it's a bit on the larger size, I just go ahead and shove for 300 total. This should achieve the result I'm looking for, which is to get the two other players out of the hand and go heads up against the action player. The plan almost works as the two players to my left fold, but sadly, the action player finds a fold as well. Still, nice to pick up $80 without having to see a flop. I kid you not, another hour and a half goes by before I pick up a playable hand. This time it's pocket jacks in the under the gun position with the $5 straddle on. Action is on the under the gun one player and they make the call, so do the cutoff, button, and big blind. I go ahead and raise to $30. The under the gun one player calls, the cutoff calls, the button calls, and the big blind calls. Five ways to the flop and I'm holding pocket jacks. There's no way this can go wrong, right? The flop comes ace, six, two, rainbow, because why wouldn't it? Surprisingly, action checks around. The turn is a five and the big blind checks to me. I honestly do not know what to do in this spot. I have showdown value, and if I can dodge a king or a queen on the river, I'll most likely take down the pot, but checking again in this spot just feels so weak. I think I may be a little bit tilted from being card dead and or whiffing flops all night long, so I decide to take a stab here for 60 bucks. I immediately regret my decision when the player to my left snap calls. Action folds around to the big blind and they come along as well. This is not looking good. Three ways to the river, which is the deuce of clubs. The big blind checks. I decide to pump the brakes slash give up and the under the gun player checks as well. With this action, I'm starting to think my jacks might actually be good. I flip them over. And yes, indeed, they are good, and we're going to pick up a nice pot here. By the way, the player to my left called a $30 raise with 8-7 offsuit in the under the gun one position, just to show you the kind of action there was at this table and why it was so frustrating to not find a good spot all night. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, it would mean a lot to me if you click the like button right now. It's a very small thing for you to do, but it makes a big difference for me as a content creator and how YouTube suggests my videos to other poker enthusiasts, so I really, really appreciate it. I got a couple of hands left to show you. These are going to be $5 bomb pots, and the game is 5-2-2. Five, two, two. five cards, two boards, two winners, and a whole lot of losers. Uh, let's get ready to gamble! In this first hand, we are dealt Jack-7-6-6-5, which is not a great starting hand, but the top board comes Queen-4-5 with two spades, so we pick up an open-ended straight draw, and the bottom board comes King-6-Ace-Rainbow, so we make bottom set. The small blind checks to us, and here, with bottom set and an open-ended straight draw, I think my hand is good enough to bet. So I put out $25, which the under-the-gun player calls, that's the player with the 8-7 offsuit from the previous hand. The cutoff calls and we go three ways to the turn. We see a seven of diamonds on the bottom board and a nine of spades on the top. I still like my hand on the bottom board, although in this game it's possible that somebody could be holding a higher set, but with the flush coming on the top board my straight draw is now worth nothing, so overall I think this is a good spot to slow down and try to get my hand to show down. I do have two pair on the top board which can be good sometimes. I check and so do the two other players. Still three ways to the river of a 7 on the bottom and a king on top. 
The 7 on bottom is a little bit problematic as it does put a potential straight out there. My hand is now weaker than it was before so I check again in hopes of going to showdown but the under the gun player now bets $100. The cutoff folds, action is back on to me. This is a gross spot that often comes up in this game. Is my set of 6 is good here? If I'm honest, it's unlikely. If my opponent was betting the top board hand for value, it would be a flush, but they checked the turn. The king on the river did open up a straight, but I don't think they would be betting that for value on the flush board. So when they bet out here, it really looks like they're going for value on the bottom board with a straight, which would be the nuts. I do have two pair on the top board as backup, but I can still lose to a baby flush. I would have definitely folded if the cutoff called, but now that they folded, I don't know. As I mentioned before, this player has been playing very loose. Ugh, it's gross. Looking at it now, I think this is probably a fold, but ultimately I got a little sticky in game and made the call. My opponent did make a straight on the bottom board, but luckily my two pair was good on top, so we ended up chopping the pot and I made a little profit of $25. Alright, on to the final hand of the night. It's another 522 $5 bomb pot, and this time we are dealt Ace 10 7 7 6 with the nut club draw and a nut straight draw, along with my pair of sevens, a much stronger starting hand. We go five ways to the flop, which comes deuce, 10, ace on bottom, and seven, king, four on top. We have top two pair on bottom and middle set on top. A very decent holding at this point in the hand. The blinds check and I bet out $20. The cutoff calls, the button folds, and both blinds come along. Four ways to the turn, which comes a four on bottom and a nine on top. Not much has changed on the bottom board, but there is a possible straight on top now. The small blind leads for 75 and with potential to boat up on both boards, I go ahead and make the call. We unfortunately break out on both boards as the river comes a 5 of diamonds on the bottom and an ace on top. Not really loving the 5 of diamonds which now puts a possible flush on the bottom board but I'm not too worried about it. I think the small blind let out after making a straight on top and when they check to me I check back praying that they're not holding two random diamonds and that maybe my two pair is good on bottom. We go to showdown and the small blind did make a straight on top and luckily they didn't have much going on on the bottom board so our two pair is good. We chop and I make another little profit of $25. It's now getting late and I have a 45 minute drive home so I decide to call it a night and rack up.